what is this alien looking creature which is crawling over a coral reef and why do the corals behind it look to be in such a decrepit state what happens if you touch this really dangerous looking sea star and when the corals could speak would they have to ask themselves who will survive and what will be left of them How's it going everybody? We are on our way to a reef in a otherwise lovely part of the Philippines but this reef has been devastated. So if you take a look at the staghorn corals at the Acropora here, they are almost completely dead. They are overgrown by algae meaning they died uh, quite a short while ago, not just in the last couple of days and what is the cause of this massive coral death? Well, it is the infamous crown of thorns sea star. Now, of course, we cannot apply principles like good and evil to animals. So the sea star just do what they do, what they evolved for which is to feed on hard corals. And here, this is a time-lapse recording. We see one crawl over the already dead and algae-covered acropora. And essentially, as a emergency food, it's eating this semi-massive coral. So this is a close-up of the sea star. They are fast-growing. They can grow to the size of a family pizza. And what makes them so extremely dangerous for coral reefs? What causes them to have these outbreaks? Now, there is a cover here of the sea star with these very dangerous spines. We'll get to them in more detail a little bit later. And you see the tube feet which is an anatomical feature of all echinoderms, including sea urchins. Crinids don't have this, but all other echinoderms have these two feet. So this is the way of how they move about over the reef. You also see some of these pedicillaria, which are like tiny claspers on the sea stars. Now, here we have the equation for population growth and to simplify things a change in population is a growth rate versus multiplied by difference to the carrying capacity so some animals like humans uh, live by having few offspring and by maximizing the input we uh, give to this few offspring you know, the investment other animals like this crown of thorn starfish they have the maximum number of eggs and actually a single large female crown of thorns can produce 50 million eggs which is equivalent to the human population of spain crazy imagine like one woman giving birth to all of spain in a single generation so this is how crazy fast these animals are reproducing and the are other tricks which they're using to essentially flood the reefs with great great masses of lava so this is from a paper by Dicker and Prine the lava of the crown of thorn starfish can clone so while they're in the water column away from the reef in mid-water they can split and duplicate hence when the larval survivor, most likely because of runoff, increased nutrients in the water column, is increased, then what happens is that these reefs get flooded with small crowns of thorns. Now, there are, of course, predators. Uh, this is a Cassis helmet snail. There is information that these might eat crown of thorns, even though friends of mine have tried in fish tanks and the cusses would refuse to eat them, at least the adults. And 
there are of course several fish and you know well known is the striton horn which feeds on crown of thorns now the base level of crown of thorns on healthy reefs is probably determined by these predators as well but the outbreaks probably are not because then these few predators on these reefs are just overwhelmed by these enormous numbers and remember the whole population of Spain of these crown of thorn starfish so this is a animal which has essentially maximized its reproductive output per generation it grows very fast fewer calcified uh, elements in this starfish. Now, this is an important taxonomic uh, comment. This is from a paper by Hatsbona and colleagues. Uh, the crown of thorns starfish, which we have in the Pacific, is not a Cantasta planki, it's a Cantasta solaris. So there are about four different species of these in the Indo-Pacific, which are all similar, which cause the same problems though, on coral reefs. Now, what else? This is a venomous, venomous animal. You do not want to be stung by a crown of thorns starfish. Rather, you really want to keep your fingers away. So, so what happened? You, you... <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay, so this man got stung. Yeah. Uh, it was really painful. I got stung on this finger. It was a little prick. It was probably a two millimeter penetration of my skin by the crown of thorns spine. And it hurt like a motherfucker. <laughs> for, 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 five for, for about five minutes. And now, this is about 40 minutes later, I can still feel it. And uh, it's not particularly painful anymore. As, nevertheless, this was the most minimal poking of a crown of thorns uh, imaginable. <laughs> but it's still quite unpleasant. So, children, don't try this at home. <laughs> Imagine a six, six doors. <laughs> so, so what happened to you? <laughs> I got six inch, six, and, six and, punctures. And, and for how long was it painful? Two weeks. Uh, and the, you tried hibiscus? I tried only hibiscus, not on the eye medicine. <laughs> and then I just sleep and then drink one water, <laughs> sleep again. Uh, okay. And then, <laughs> bye. <laughs>